progress has been made on the dice. So this is currently what it is. It's uh, an 80 tiny 85. We're still using the same dice top per topper face dice face that's it so still using that the leds are soldered on the other side i won't turn it over just now because this shake switch will activate so i've programmed it up as best as i can but it's been difficult and i'll explain that in a bit when we look at the code but for now this is it um, it works as a shake switch just down here and i can do that and change the face you can see up here the numbers are changing based on how much i'm moving this thing now it's currently running off three volts and it's drawing about five milliamps probably a little bit more my uh meter is not entirely accurate so let's um not touch it anymore and you'll see what happens so i've programmed it so that it forces it to ignore that uh, shake switch confirm the number by flashing uh, i think four times and then it goes into sleep mode. So it's it's asleep now, but we're going to wake it up with the shake switch. Oh, see, this is one of the problems I've got at the moment. You'll see that it woke up and then immediately went to sleep again. There we go. So it's still working. So the um, shake switch has a timeout attached to it. I decided that if it wasn't being shaken for more than a second, so if it didn't detect a, another pulse for a second, then uh, it would stop and disable the shake switch. So we've just got a one there. Now this is disabled that shake switch now, so I can't do anything with it. And once it goes to sleep again, then I can activate it again. Now it looks like some weird numbers are appearing. They're not. It's, um, it's just because they're flashing on and off so quickly. There's only um, one array of values that it can use, so there can't be the wrong number of LEDs on at a time. But if we leave it there, and it goes off again. Let's have a look at the little current, because it's running off three volts at the moment, but it can run off five. Um, so let's zoom out a little bit and bring current measurement stuff in. So I'll just detach it from there. So we've got a multimeter. I'm going to put it into milliamps mode for now. And then hook up my probes. And there we go. So you can see with no LEDs on, we're drawing about three milliamps. Let's see that again. 3.5 milliamps. Then it goes to sleep and we're reading nothing. So let's trigger this thing. You can see we've got I think we peaked at about eight there, nine, 10 milliamps. Let's see if we can roll a six ish. So yeah, about nine and a half milliamps when we roll a six, which is the most LEDs that will be on at one time. And then we're going to go to sleep and we read nothing. Now let's switch it into microamps. I'm going to short my probes here because I don't know if this is going to reset the microcontroller. So let's just trigger a number. And then once those lights go out, we can remove these, uh, these probes that I have shorted. And it is reading 0 0.15 microamps. So pretty darn low. Um, I'm not quite sure how accurate that measurement is, but before I disabled the ADC on the board, the analog to digital converter, I was reading about 260 microamps. So I've disabled that. Now we're down to 0 0.15, which is very, very low. So again, let's switch it over into milliamps mode. And then it drops down to nothing, which is pretty ace. So what we've got here is that we've got the uh, shake switch, which is uh, attached to uh, PB2, well, no, pin two of the 80 tiny 85, and it's running a um, an interrupt com interrupter routine essentially. So uh, the interrupt adds one onto the number counter, checks whether that number counter is overflowed from six, and then resets to zero um, or to one, I think. Um, and uh, that means that you can't roll a zero basically, which is which is nice. But it wakes up the microcontroller, triggers that. Then the microcontroller has a timeout. So if it doesn't see another pulse for 1.5 seconds and the number hasn't changed, 
then it will go to sleep. And that's basically all we've got. It's running off the four pins that are available and the one pin that's available for the shake switch. So we've got eight pins in total, leaving three, which is VCC, ground and reset, which are being used. Um, well, reset actually isn't being used for anything, but we can't really use that if we want to reprogram the microcontroller. Let's have a little look at the code. And then I think I won't do it today, but we'll, um, we'll uh, look at redesigning the bottom board. So now it's just using an AT Tiny 85. And that's all thanks to comments from you guys where you said, actually, you can use uh, just an AT Tiny 85. You don't have to use one of those 74HC 595s, which is what I was going to use, which would have been a lot higher power overall. OK, to the computer. Right, so here we've got the code. Um, we've got our pin mappings, first of all. So this is how I figured out how my dice was going to work. So we've got um, our LEDs indicated here, and X is an LED that can go on or off. On pin one, we've got the central LED for one. On pin three, we've got the two outside LEDs. And on pin four, we've got the diagonal two there, which is actually a two. And then on pin zero, we've got the opposing diagonal. And so that means that we can create every face of the dice with these pins. So let's say pin one plus pin four and pin zero creates five, or pin one and pin four will create a three. Um, Similarly, pin zero and pin four create a four. And uh, that's it, isn't it? Oh, wait, six. So that's uh, three, four, and zero creates a six. So that's all of our numbers. Um, I'm including sleep and interrupt here because we're going to be using both of them. So if I scroll down here, you can see where I've, I, I've sort of defined some of my variables and or there's some of them are static, but I haven't defined them as static. But we've got a long for previous millis. We're going to be using that to sleep with that, not sleep without delay. What's it called? Blink without delay uh, sort of methodology for timing things. But I'm only doing it once, so I don't need to use my library for this. Now, we've got an array of our LEDs, and that's all the pins that they're on. And we'll get to why that's necessary in a minute. And we've got a number. This is our dice number. So this is going to be carrying our number throughout our program. We've got previous number, so we can keep track of whether it's changed. We've got... Uh, first time I can't remember if I'm using that I think I might be rolling and shake switch shake switch is on pin 2 that's why it's identified here now we've got dice face now this is a, um, a multi-dimensional array it's got two dimensions so it's like this array here but in an array of seven values um, so first off we've got zero that's for turning the dice off we don't really need that but i want to be able to count from one two three four five six so i have to add a dummy in at the bottom now you can see that these correspond to the diagrams up here so pin one is one so if the dice is one we've got pin one you can see on the uh, array up here one three four and zero and so these define what the faces are going to look like now, a bit further down, we've got a function called count shake. This is attached to the shake switch, so it's got an interrupt attached. So it will set the Boolean for rolling to be true. It will increment the number and then do a test to see if the number is greater than six. If it is, it's going to drop it down to one. We don't want a zero and we definitely don't want a seven. So that's how it's going to work. Now, we've got a function called start sleep, but let's let's uh, minimize that for a second and jump to the setup. So in the setup, we're creating a uh, an input pull up, pull up. <laughs> can't speak. We're setting the shake switch pin two to be um, an input and it's got a pull up on it. That shake switch is attached to ground. So when you shake it, it uh, connects this pin, pin two to ground and it will trigger. Um, so we've got our pins with the LEDs on. We're going to set those as outputs. But we're also doing something weird here. It looks like odd code, right? Uh, not normal code that you expect to see in one of these Arduino IDEs. Or maybe you do. Anyway, it's part of the sleep stuff. Um, low power stuff, really. So the ADC SRA, whatever, basically, it basically sets a bit so that it turns off the uh, analog to digital conversion, saving around 260 microamps, which is a lot, right? A huge amount. So in our loop, uh, this is where we're starting to write our LEDs. So um, we've got a for loop here that runs through um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 of the array of LEDs. And so that will trigger each one of those pins to be whatever value is in 
the number value of uh, our number array. And because the number starts at zero, whenever you turn that dice on for the first time, it's going to be a zero. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it chewing through any of your batteries because it's got nothing on the screen. And so that's basically all this does. It just pings off the, uh, the appropriate signal on one of those pins. Next, we do a bit where we figure out whether it's still rolling or people are still shaking it. So we've got our unsigned long for current millis. And then we're doing the, basically the blink without delay thing. But here we're doing a test to see if the number has changed since the last time we went through the loop. So if something has triggered, if something has triggered, if the number is different from the previous number, then we'll say that the previous millis is equal to the current millis and the previous number equals number. And so then when we come to do the test again next time, if it's changed from this time period, then we'll know that it's still rolling. So we reset that timer, that timer that we set at two seconds interval. So coming back down, this is where we test. And if it's correct, then we go to sleep. So we'll say if, if the current millis minus the previous millis is greater or equal to the 2000 milliseconds, then previous millis equals the current millis and we start sleep. So let's jump to that start sleep function. So at the start of start sleep, we detach the interrupt from uh, our int zero interrupt zero pin, which is pin two on the AT1085. Um, if rolling is true, so if it has actually been triggered, this is a very specific case. So if we're starting it for the first time, if we've turned on the microcontroller for the first time, rolling is not equal to true because we don't even attach the interrupt. So we don't want this whole rigmarole of delay here. So we just skip that and we set it to sleep and attach our interrupt just down here. So when you first turn it on, there is no interrupt. You can't roll it. It, has, it takes a couple of seconds before you can roll it. So if you've rolled it, it uh, delays by four seconds, leaving that number on the display for four seconds. And then we're going to flash those LEDs on and off. We use temp value here. It could have been a Boolean, actually. We're only using zero and one. But um, all that does is says whether it should be on or off. So we do a test here. So we'll do a for loop to run through eight times. And if our temp value is not equal to one, we're going to turn our LEDs off. Then say after that one loop, we'll turn the LEDs on again. So if it isn't equal to, well, actually, if it's not equal to one, if it's zero, if it's one, yeah, that's right. <laughs> God, it's confusing when you've got all these nested things. So if it is one, then we'll use this else here and we'll do a for loop, putting the number up on the display. Then we'll delay for three seconds. So the LEDs will be on for three, off for three, on for three, off for three, four times essentially. And so it will flash that number just to confirm what it was. It turns off rolling and then we're going to turn all of our LEDs off. And here comes the sleep part. This is the part that's going to get us into a sort of low current mode. So we set the sleep mode to sleep mode power down. I think that's actually the lowest current mode that you can get. And then sleep enable, that sets some things in the register, some bits. Then we're going to attach our interrupt. So this is the first time this happens. So it doesn't happen the first time we start on the microcontroller. Um, it goes to sleep first, then attaches the interrupt. Um, we're looking for a low signal. So we're connecting it to ground, so it will go low. Then we start sleep mode. So the program then wakes up from here. You can see that in the text here. I didn't write this. This is just standard code you can get from the Arduino website for sleep. And then we have sleep disable once this interrupt has been triggered. That's pretty much it. So our count shake number is the interrupt trigger. Doesn't do anything special, just increments that number, checks whether the, the number is greater than six. If it is, it goes to a one. So we never get a zero. We always get um, a one to six. All right, well, I think that's it. Thank you very much to everyone who helped out in the comments on the previous video. Really appreciate it. Um, it's helped me make it into an 80 tiny 85 based thing. Gonna play around with some of the delays, I think, because I'm not sure whether two seconds is enough of a delay for the rolling time. Um, but we'll see. I'll play with it a bit more. Actually, should we have a little look at um, the diagram? Let's do that. So this is our current Eagle schematic. 
with our 80 tiny to five and it's got a 74hc 595 on it i haven't redone this so i need to go back and redo this but we've got um the board layout here that board layout is or the, rather the um the dimensions are not going to change but we've got the 74HC595 in here. We don't need that anymore. So we can replace that with resistors. And then I think we're going to have wires running up to the board. I'm not sure yet. I don't know how I want the design to be. It'd be really nice to get some rainbow ribbon strip going up or something. That'd be cool. I'll see if I can get one with um, a certain number of wires. I don't know. It's going to be fun though. And I'm really pleased it's actually working. All right. Well, I think that is everything for today. And thank you very much. I will speak to you all soon.